how good this feels to be oh. in my stuff. <clears throat> I, you know what's funny is I don't think I realize how much I don't feel like myself for a while. Just putting my uh, stuff on and braiding my hair. Man, yeah. I got a little bit teary eyed. Yeah, no, I feel you. Just even pulling out my um, beadwork bag for, to pull out my necklace and earring. It just, I got excited just like looking at my beadwork again and I just stand all the same time. All right. You know that joke about Walmart, about people going in like fancy dresses to go to Walmart? I'm going to Walmart like this now. <laughs> I found yeah, the costume. There we go, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Everyone put on the Young Spirit shirt now. <laughs> YS, YS, baby, rocking the YS. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to power even more. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I should have made fry bread. I'm oh. <laughs> just kidding. We haven't eaten yet. I know. Oh, I haven't eaten yet. You guys are going to eat demonstra fry bread Demonstration more. later. Very right. conscious. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An Indian sign language. All yeah. tribe. <laughs> Uh, I can uh, actually do sign language. You uh, <laughs> just don't say it that way. You just start going hard. No, I know sign language. <laughs> it's like no way. All right, guys, it's six o'clock. Y'all ready to get started? Yes. Yeah. What, what about uh, Sanabi? Sanabi. Yeah, I'm here. There she is. How do you say your name again? The Nabi. The Nabi? Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that mean? It's a type of flower <laughs> from my area. But it's too late. All right, guys. So um, Shauna um, and Ruben and Sanabi will have you guys mute your audio. 601, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and broadcast, record this. There we go. <clears throat> Hello, welcome to This Is Why We Dance. This evening's webinar will honor Native American powwow culture. I'm Stacy Montooth, a citizen of the Walker River Paiute Nation in beautiful Shurs, Nevada, and the executive director of the Nevada Indian Commission. Annually, the commission is proud to host the Stuart Father's Day powwow here at our historic Indian boarding school campus. But because of the continuing global pandemic, we were forced to cancel our 2020 celebration. Tonight's program features nationally recognized dancers, Grammy nominated singers, renowned and award-winning artists, a gathering of nations MC, and an up and coming documentary filmmaker. Despite COVID-19, <laughs> we are carving out time to remember why we dance and how vital powwow culture is to all of our tribal nations, our urban Indians, as well as our allies outside of Indian country. With great pride, please allow me to recognize and thank tonight's sponsors, the Nevada Arts Council, the Nevada Department of Education, and the Nevada Indian Commission. With assistance from the Nevada Department of Tourism and Culture, the University of Nevada, Reno, Reynolds School of Journalism and visit Carson City. Now, please let me introduce our host for this evening. She's an educator and activist, the founder and organizer of the Reno Sparks Indian Colony Powwow Club and the co-founder of the Nevada Statewide Native American Caucus, Ms. Teresa Melendez. <laughs> thank you, Stacey, what a gracious introduction and thank you to all of our sponsors and all of our esteemed panelists here to join us today. And thank you to everybody who has logged on, who has taken time out of your evening to celebrate an evening of powwow and Native American powwow culture today. Um, so I'm your host, Teresa Melendez. Bojo, Kwe Badaswanse Ndijnikaz, Pokagan Band, Potawatomi Ndao, Mishike Ndodem, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Nadonjaba, but Reno, Nevada, Ndida. My name is Teresa Melendez. My Anishinaabe name is Woman Walking Forward. I'm originally from Southwest Michigan. I'm Anishinaabe. I'm enrolled with the Pokagan Band of Potawatomi. I'm also um, Odawa and uh, of Polish descent. 
So happy to spend this time with you this evening. So first we wanna start off with a couple of tech tips. So everybody that's joining us today as an attendee, if you're having some problems with the Zoom connection, I know that with the weather and the fires and the heat waves that sometimes our internet connection is affected. So I just wanted to share a couple of tips. So tip number one, if you have other tabs open, if you're on a desktop or laptop or a tablet, or even a smartphone, if you have other tabs open, go ahead and close out those tabs. That will um, conserve the bandwidth for the Zoom meetings. So, so that may help. If there are lots of people in the house using the same Wi-Fi, sometimes, you know, kicking your little brother off um, his video game, sometimes that helps too. So conserving the bandwidth or just plugging right into with the ethernet cord, that's even best. Um, this Zoom meeting is in a webinar format, so only the panelists have their audio and video enabled. We do have a chat box, so if you scroll down, you'll see um, a little chat icon at the bottom. Go ahead and click on that. A chat box will pop up, and we want to encourage you to use the chat feature. Communicate with us that way. We'll be monitoring the chat box for questions. Stacy's on it. She'll make sure that, that we address any of those questions um, as time permits. But what do you think, Stacy? Should we encourage people to tell us where they're from? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's use that chat box. There we go. Maria Cruz, way to start us off. Oh, uh, Bojo, my sister Mickey joining us from Indiana. So go ahead in the chat box, tell us your name and where you're joining from. If you're um, and the tribal, the tribe that you um, are affiliated with, if you have tribal affiliation, we'd love to hear that too. So, with that being said, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna um, turn it over to Delina and Elijah. So, if you guys want to unmute yourself, one thing that we um, that we're mindful of, even though we're meeting in virtual spaces, we know there's things that we can do to to connect with spirit, to connect with each other to ground ourselves even in virtual spaces to share that heart energy and, the, and that good feeling and so we like to start off events with a prayer or a song or some one of those feel good you know acknowledging our ancestors acknowledging the creator um simple acknowledgement so we've asked elijah and delina to start us off in that good way <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you for starting us off with a song. So um, where, as Stacy mentioned, Elijah and uh, Delina are Grammy non nominated singers. They sing with the Young Spirit Singers and we're gonna learn a little bit more about them in a few minutes. But I do wanna take a quick minute to introduce our panelists. So if you guys can give us a, a princess wave when I call your name, I wanna introduce, you, wanna introduce our attendees to the crew. So tonight we have joining us, well, Delina Trachier, Elijah Williams, 
Uh, Ruben Littlehead. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Sanavi Spoon Hunter. Shauna Tom. Perry Thompson. Bucky Harjo. And everybody met already, Stacy Montus. So welcome guys, we're happy to have you. We're happy to host you. All right, so let's just jump right into it, Ruben. So you're first on deck. So uh, I want to share a little bit about Ruben. Ruben Littlehead is um, northern, uh, from the Northern Cheyenne tribe in, from Lame Deer, Montana, currently living in Lawrence, Kansas. And as Stacy mentioned, um, Ruben is a world-renowned master of ceremonies. He's going to tell us a little bit more about um, Powell's for folks who are new to Powell's, tell us about you know, what a master of ceremony is. But you travel anywhere in the United States and, and attend Powell's anywhere in the United States, and you're likely to hear Ruben's voice over, or, over the microphone. And so even just having our tech check earlier or yesterday, it was so cool just to hear Ruben talk and like get on like, hey, there was some like flashbacks of powwow. So I hope you all enjoy <laughs> the stories that he shares today as much as I enjoyed our time just listening to him yesterday. So um, without further ado, Ruben, I'm passing it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And uh, thank you for that awesome song. Uh, Elijah and Delina, hi, hi. Um, you know, yesterday um, we had introductions and um, a little bit out of practice too, but everybody everybody got to introduce their self and their language. And, and even Teresa, in the beginning there, I heard the bujou and I heard the, uh, the you know, the, 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 the language being spoken. And so real quickly, my name is Mikko Ness, Na Shaven, Na Nisuta Na Namunhaya Na Woho Hif, Subut Na Lame Deer, Ashland Tongue River Na Na the Tista Sutta Na Namunhaya Na. That's that's where I come from, and that's my Indian name, and that's who I represent. But um, I'm very honored to be here. I'm very honored to be here and share some uh, time with you guys this evening. Um, an, an MC, uh, um, they say in Lakota, and then uh, in uh, an MC is a he's he's like a storyteller, but he's also he's like a facilitator, but he's also He's also the voice that that kind of captures the tone of the power. And he also um, picks it up where it's needed and then also identifies it and 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 can see it when that when the spirit is there. When when, when I say spirit, I'm I'm talking about there's a power spirit that that uh, that a lot of singers talk about in their drum, their drum songs. A lot of uh a lot of songs talk about this power spirit, and and um, it's it's a it's a it's a spirit of uh, of goodness, of positive energy. It's um, it's it's just within that circle, and so uh, I shared this once before. And as a young man, um, when I first started picking up a microphone, um, you know, a lot of times if I, I I picked it up. At an early age, my grandfather, my my dad's uncle, my dad's mom's brother, his name is Kenneth Beartusk, and he uh, he was our longtime MC back home, and so I kind of started following his footsteps a little bit, and then um, when my family found out I was MCing down here in Kansas and areas, and, and they brought me home and and uh, took me through took me through protocol and and, and ceremony. And so at a young age, um, but you know, an MC, an MC also has to know, an MC also has to know singers. He's got to know dancers. He's got to know the dances that go with those songs, the songs that go with those dances. If that doesn't twist your mind up too much. And you got to know the people, uh, you got to know the slang. And then you got to know you, you have to know protocol and and when you start getting asked to go to various places 
you know, outside your comfort zone or outside your own reservation. I, I always, you know, try to encourage and, and try to give advice to younger MCs, you know, do your research, um, you know, before you go to Onion Lake, you know, before you, before you go to Lloyd and before you, you, you travel up, up to Lloyd and you come up there and you go away in the sticks and you, you don't know where you're going and you come out of these willows and you go through like six, seven miles of bush and then you come out of these trees and there's this big old arbor and there's just cars, you know, you, you gotta understand where you're going. You gotta understand, um, um, you know, who, who your audience is. And then, um, um, but do your research, do your homework. So that way you can respect some of the, some of the, the protocols that they have in that area. Um, being an MC, it's, it's really giving me the opportunity to to travel a lot. Um, it, it's given me the opportunity to take my, my family, my, my kids uh, to a lot of Indian communities and a lot of places that, that, you know, when I was a young boy, I always just heard stories of, you know, I've, I've heard stories of, of Onion Lake. I've heard stories of, of, of Beaver Lake, of, of uh, Enoch, you know, I've heard stories of us, uh, you know, um, the legendary, uh, What's it, uh, you know, all those places in Canada. Then at the same time, you know, show band festival, um, gathering of nations, Albuquerque, you know, um, man, I, I was just emceeing like one year and, and, and the next year I was already at, I was already at Albuquerque, you know, and, um, it's a good thing they got that black tablecloth there, you know, because up here, you know, I look nice and calm and ready, you know, like Eminem and stuff, but down here waist underneath that that table man my, my knees were my, my knees were kind of shaking but um but if you believe in something and you you believe in yourself and you and you believe in you believe in something you believe in yourself then and then you know it's not cliche or whatever but you go with it um but also i've been told by some elders back home that ruben you have a gift Ruben, you have a gift, and that gift is 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 your 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 words, the way you the way you can express yourself, the way you can make people feel, the way you can you know make people laugh, lift people up, you know. Um, and a lot of that is just um, paying attention. Um, one of the things that Teresa asked me to give advice to the listeners that are out there, um, man, it's so hard because because this year, this 2020 year, man, it just, it, it really canceled everything out. And, but hey, you know, we're looking to 2021. So in 2021, when power start back up again, my advice is to, is, is, is to pay attention more, get, get involved more. Don't just go to the powwow and buy an Indian taco and sit and watch, watch the grand entry at seven o'clock and then leave. You know, if you can, Take in, take in some of the other activities that are going on. Take in some of the, the, the stick games, the hand games, the, the Indian relays. Because usually, um, if it's a res power, like a, like a cultural, cel like a tribal celebration, then there's other things going on. There's other uh, things going on. And a lot of times, there's, there's, there's activities going on at a power that's not necessarily at the, at the dance arena. Uh, there could be name-giving ceremonies at the camp. Um, Sometimes the announcer will announce, hey, we have a feed on the north side. We have a feed on the north, north side of the camping grounds. You know, come on over to uh, Spoon Hunter family. And the Spoon Hunter family is having a feed at five o'clock. And so when you hear that, you know, and, and usually nine times out of 10, that family is, is feeding visitors because the purpose of a, of a powwow it's a social event. It's, it's a time where, where we as natives can, we can celebrate life. We, we can celebrate who we are as, as Indian people, as native people. And the three or four days that we get, you know, it, it, you know, it used to be weeks. It, it used to be maybe even months back in the day. Nobody really had a, had a, a, a recollection of time. No one had a, a measurement of time of how long a duration of encampment was. And an encampment was a time where you know, in the springtime, we survived another winter. 
we survived another winter and we came out and we gave blessings and we gave we gave thanksgiving and we danced and we feasted and then it was a time we all gathered and traded so <clears throat> now we condense it down to a weekend and and then and then then we even condense it down to even further of competition singing and dancing but as a powwow coordinator um as as a powwow mc you got to be aware of everything that's going on and i don't think a lot of times a lot of people really don't know how much of what's going on out there there's the mc there's arena director and then you know maybe there's like some head judges maybe drum judge you know just different stuff like that but those two they work tandem together and they keep that thing flowing and from the start to finish uh sometimes there's only one mc sometimes there's only one arena director sometimes there's four mcs and four arena directors sometimes it gets a little chaotic but before I get too far off the subject, I was talking about 2021, when power will start back up again, my advice is to, to listen more, to, to get involved more, and to pay attention more. Um, sometimes there is ceremonies at, at a, at a power, um, and the difference between a ceremony and, and social is, um for instance if you know in some tribes when that feather falls it is considered a ceremony there's an actual ceremony where they retrieve that fallen feather they they pick it up there's there's certain songs that go with it and there's a certain way you charge it and there's a certain way you pick it up and a lot of that is being shortcut you know this and that different some tribes honor it some some don't some are just taking shortcuts because of time restraints and but when we do that as native people we're, we're cutting off a lot of integrity of, of the actual um of the actual ceremony of the actual importance so and you know sometimes you go to a powwow and you're like oh man i wanted to see some dancing but man they got like specials man they got like three specials but i always tell people you know as a young man too when i where i come from in lame deer um that's our time like i said that's our time of the year where we get to honor a loved one we get to honor a loved one that has passed on or we get to honor a loved one that has achieved a milestone like graduation or or their bachelor's or master's degree or their doctorate degree or maybe you know they um you know maybe they just got back from um from from war you know from from iraq or afghanistan and we we, we set some time to to uh welcome them home and we we, we sing for them those kind of specials are done in front of people they're done in front of the, the people so they can see and witness. And, um, you know, a lot of times those specials, the family may save up all year. They may save up all year for just 30, 40 minutes out of the, out of the uh, scheduled time. And sometimes it runs over, you know, and it throws a little things off, but that's just, that's just kind of how native ways are. You know, we eat, we, we, we take our time and, um, <laughs> but an MC, an MC should have a lot of knowledge. He should have a lot of knowledge. He should have humor. He should have, uh, he or she, man, I keep saying he, because there, there are some, there are some up and coming female MCs now. There are, you know, I think Delina Trottier is, is picking up a mic over there. I, I see her yelling around at Elijah once in a while. So, um, but there are some female MCs that are that are starting to kind of make sedway. So I'm I'm not too sure on I can't drop any names right now, but I've I've actually heard. Um, but you know, this 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 segment uh, of this webinar of why we dance, it 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 is the it's the true essence of identity of who we are. Last night we had a little practice, uh we had a practice um webinar thing and just to kind of check everything the technicals and everything and uh we got done and i and i laid here and i was, I was sipping my tea and i was sitting here thinking you know i'm um <coughs> i'm doing another webinar with uh, <clears throat> uh center for native american youth and next week they have this group from new zealand they have this group from new zealand and they're coming in and they, they want to share uh their their haka dance the haka or hoka whatever and it's from new zealand right so anyway that's 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 unique to the new zealand 
okay? See, what a lot of times as Native people, I think we don't understand is how unique our style is, how unique our traditional dancers are with that eagle bustle, you know, and that, that porcupine head roach, that bone breastplate, you know, a lot of the stuff that's, that, that's made commercially now, maybe, maybe it's made out of plastic now, but, you know, when you look at the history of it, you know, those were real, those were made out of real bone, coyote bone. You know, those, those were made out of, uh, you know, there were certain feathers that you put on different stuff that signify different things. And, and um, you know, our moccasins, our, our whole outfit, our whole outfit that identifies us. And, and, and a lot of tribes, granted, they've, they've adopted a lot of different styles, you know, because of, because of uh, you know, boarding school or, you know, um, you know uh, just, just all the genocide that happened from, from the Indian wars to disease and everything else. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna go to the whole history of things, but we gotta remember what little culture that we retained what little culture that we still have left, we, we still cherish and we still dance and we still sing. But every now and then you'll hear of different native groups going to Europe. You'll hear of native groups, hey man, we're, we're going to Paris. We're gonna go do some shows over there. Yeah, we're gonna go make some money. And we're thinking about the money part of it, but th those Europeans and those Germans and everybody, man, they're, they're packed house because they see this native culture and it's still romanticized as, as the wild west. And so, and so when we as native people, when we understand that when we're at a powwow, sometimes I don't think, I think we take it for granted. And now, and now that we're in this COVID, now that we're in this quarantine and we can't powwow and we're thinking, man, I really miss powwow, man. I, 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 you know, I'm never gonna come in grand entry, half dress, you know, I'm gonna dance in your tribals. I, I can hear people saying that, you know? And I hope that's the case because it was getting kind of crazy, you know. Maybe, maybe the creator did something on, you know, on that. On that, am, am I getting my time? Is that my dinging? I don't You're know. So funny, Ruben. We're getting close to your time. Okay. So anyway, man, I'm, I I can really ramble on, and you only gave me like 10, 15 minutes. But I tell you what, um, I don't even know where I went with that, man. I just kind of jumped on that horse, and that horse took its own way. Holy smokes! MC is. And I'm not being biased and I'm not being conceited or anything. The MC is the life, the power. He is the guy that has the energy. If you have a good one, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a good one. I'm just saying that from what I know and from what I've seen and experienced, when you have a, when you have a rocking power, a rocking MC, it's going to be rocking. And so I am going to jump in there because Ruben is a spectacular MC. And so I can see Delina and Elijah, like, so as dancers and singers, we, we really appreciate a strong MC that has an experience and the know-how and the wherewithal, because not only does the MC keep everything mo uh, moving along with the arena director, but they also, they direct everybody at the POW. So if somebody that's a spectator, if it's your first time at a POW, right. you'll listen to the MC, you'll listen to somebody like Ruben directing you, telling you what's up next and when you can take pictures and when it's an honor song, when you can't take pictures, you know, telling people to stand for grand entry or you know for an honor song. But then even like, you know, as for dancers, um, and Ruben was not, was not tooting his own horn, the MC is incredibly important. Like um, we rely on our dancer, our MCs to give us the direction so we can prepare when we're up to dance or to sing. So like, you know, I'm gonna be listening for, you know, senior adult women's contests. And then my, my, I get butterflies in my stomach every time, <laughs> but um, they lead the powwow. And so they're a part of the team that makes sure that, make sure that everything runs smoothly. But the role of uh, an a MC is, I, I, we, we, we can't undercount the role and the significance of that role. So, and sometimes you see more than one MC at a powwow, like Ruben mentioned, especially the larger powwows that may run into you know, 2 a.m. and they can right. share those responsibilities. Sometimes you see junior MCs where they're like training up young people to learn that skill. And right. I, I even liked how you mentioned, you know, we're seeing a, 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 a maybe not a surge, but a growing number of women and sure. too, which is always nice to see. Yep. All right, thank you, Ruben. And if anybody has any questions that they want to um, to ask our MC, or you know, the, at the very end that you'd like to bring up or acknowledgements, but you got some um, accolades in the comments too, Ruben. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Before I move on to um, our, our next presenters, um, which will be Delina and Elijah, um, I do also want to point out one more thing that um, Ruben mentioned. He did talk about how powwows are more than just a social gathering. He mentioned how there are components of ceremony that are that are woven into powwows through different practices or cultural practices, how there might be a naming ceremony, how there's traditional games and songs like hand games you might see and rodeos and feasts and feeds because we come from people. Our teachings are different from community to community, right? We're over 500 indigenous nations in this United States. So there's not one, um, you know, one way to dance, one way to dress, one way to sing. There's, there's a lot of variety and there's a lot of vibrancy in Powell culture. And the, the, our panelists that are here today, we come from all over North America. And so the way that we might dress, you know, how we bling out our outfits are gonna look a little different. Shauna says it's never too much bling though, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But I loved what, um, Ruben, what you mentioned, what you touched on, and that in these spaces there are opportunities for us to connect as community and yes. to, for us to celebrate our families and our accomplishments. And that's something that you see at a powwow that you don't often see in other places in Western America. Like when you, when somebody graduates with their master's degree or their bachelor's degree or doctor degree, and if they're a Powell person, you're gonna see them hosting an elaborate special, you know, recognizing all those people that helped them on their path, that yes. helped them complete that, you know, um, goal and achieve that goal. Because we know that not, not, none of us do this on our own. We are not self-made people. We are where we are because of our family, because of our ancestors, because of the spirit spirits and all our community who helped build us up and guide us on our way. So, um, Powell is a beautiful culture. And we're, we know that the 105 folks on here today, they love Powell just as much as we do, or they're interested in learning more about powwows. So on that note, let's learn a little bit more about powwows. So I'm gonna pass it over to Sanavi Spoonhunter. Sanavi Spoonhunter is a recent graduate from the University of California, Berkeley. Um, she is a filmmaker and journalist, love, love that. And so I'm going to pass it over to Sanavi, and she's going to introduce our next guests. Pishatmu, thank everyone for coming and joining us this evening. Um, I'm going to keep it short and sweet because this is a platform for Delina and her partner, Elisha. And so I'm really glad that Delina and Elisha were able to begin this webinar with some live music because the short film that I created about them encompasses some of that singing, but more than that. Not only does the video showcase their vocals, their vocal ability, um, their talent in that, but it also shows a strong influence of what Pawa has done in their lives. From their own relationships, um, their own relationship, the two of them being together, and then also um, those with family and friends. And like everyone mentions, and I'm just gonna echo that right now, as members of the famous drum group, Young Spirit, and the talented beaters that they are, um, I'm excited to share this piece and I hope you guys all enjoy it. So share my screen first and then we'll get to it. I was always told that our lake is a healing lake. The lake doesn't belong to the people. These people here belong to the lake. My name is Elijah Williams. I am the Northern Paiute, and I am a member of the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe. My name is Delina Trache. I am from Onion Lake Creek Nation, Saskatchewan, Canada. I started singing with Young Spirit back in 2012. Growing up around here, being really young and watching and listening to all these other groups that were well known at the time, and there wasn't really any of that around here. It's like listening to your favorite band all throughout your teenage years and then them finally asking you to <laughs> yeah. travel and to sing with them. And I always sang with them. The power brought us together. I don't think if you didn't sing, if I didn't grow up that way too, we wouldn't even be together, I don't think. Thank you. 
have always traveled uh, extensively throughout the U.S. and Canada. We're going over states to get somewhere is from one weekend to another. When you go into new places, like meeting the people and just, they're so kind. They really take care of us everywhere we've been. It's just amazing when you meet new people too. My father raised us to recognize powwow as a celebration of life, celebration of being Native people. And like you said, it brings together a community, brings together families, people, it reconnects. Like sometimes some people will go to one powwow every year because that's their chance to get to visit with family or things like that. My dad is an amazing beadwork artist and my sisters. These are the moxins. So um, I beaded these and then the females, the women, they also wear leggings with the moxins. They sit on the leg. The headband. So it goes over the head like so with the braids. So here we have the choker with the choker drop. So it kind of just goes around and sits on the neck. And just like all my sisters bead. And this is something we sit and do together. Um, I sit at the powwow at the drum and I'll just sit there and bead when we're not singing. I was taught that the drum represents the heartbeat of Mother Earth. As singers and groups, we, we have to carry the knowledge of hundreds of songs, if not thousands, for each different style, each different style of dance. So where I'm from, uh... I wouldn't ever sit down at the drum unless I was allowed to, but there's a lot of places where they do welcome that. They do welcome that. So I think it depends on the territory, what's acceptable, what's not. We all have our kids at the drum. They're all amazing fathers. They really are. That drum is just keeps us together. And like that drum takes us everywhere. It took us to the Grammys. <sighs> Trying to get into the Zoom. I don't know. <laughs> Am I still on the main? Yep, we can still see you. Okay, let me not share my screen. Okay. Just click the share screen button. Let's cancel the share screen. There we go. Oh. All right, so I would like to um, invite Delina and Elijah, if you'd like to pop on the screen. Hello. Hello. There we go. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, that was the first time we've seen the video, so it was so awesome. <laughs> I couldn't help but get emotional because I really grew to love Pyramid Lake, and it was just well done. I yeah. really loved it. <clears throat> awesome work, Sanabi. Awesome. Awesome. So Delina and Elijah, um, I was wondering if you could, um, so we learned a little bit more about you and, um, you know, the powwows brought you together and, and for a lot of, for a lot of dancers and singers and MCs and, and even vendors, like powwows are a part of, like, you hear people saying it's a way of life. Like it's a big part of our culture, of our identity. Mm -hmm. It's, um, big part of our relationships and familial engagements. Um, I was also wondering if you could share um, maybe something that you've learned or a piece of advice that you'd like to share with, with our audience today, something that Powell has enriched your life with and lesson that you've learned. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, something I was always told ever since I first became a singer was you take care of that drum and that drum will take care of you. And that's something I witnessed firsthand, you know, throughout our travels. And um, 
we we're really blessed to be able to travel with our family, you know, wherever I go, she goes and, you know, our kids. And we're very fortunate to be able to, um, to take them on the road. And um, like Ruben said, that's, you know, going these places, you know, I've being, being a young singer, I've only heard stories of, you know, going to Gathering of Nations, going to Canada, going to Skimitsin. And it's, it's pretty awesome, you know, um, being, in, being able to be a part of this group and just to be able to travel with our families. And it's, um, it's just a very uh, big blessing. Um, yeah, um, one thing um, that I would like to just share, even about um, beating um, is def or singing, um, is definitely just allowing us to be out there to learn and to put yourself in a position where you'll be seen. And also just to mind your, <clears throat> keep to your, don't take what people say um, even if it's negative, don't take it with you. Um, because if I would have done that or him, I'm sure we've had times where we were discouraged by someone. Um, I would just say not to take that serious because I think if we did that, we wouldn't have been here. You know, I really love singing and um, just to keep singing and to keep trying and not to um, doubt yourself. I think that's where we limit ourselves is with that self-doubt. Um, and just to definitely find people who are going to encourage you and be with those people. You know, a lot of times where people are sent into our life for a reason. Um, some people are just seasons of our lives. <laughs> just kidding. But, you know, like things happen for a reason. And, you know, yeah. So that's my advice. <laughs> yeah. And to um, all the young singers, um, don't be shy to mm -hmm. learn these ways or um don't be scared to ask questions you know because mm -hmm. this is a really good way of life you know i've um the drums taken us to places we've never thought we'd go mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yeah yeah awesome thank you guys so um one of the one of the things that um, Delina, I, I, I really love that you talked about is you talked about family and how that mm -hmm. brought you guys together, but then um, also like traveling as a family and mm -hmm. um, and I I think it's it's interesting how the term family evolves, especially like your our powwow family and yeah. you know, our drum family and our ceremony mm -hmm. family and how that's you see that so much in indigenous communities where those familial terms definitely grow beyond mm -hmm. our uh, immediate, you know, brother, sister, husband, wife, and children. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you. And that is Delina Trachier from Onion Lake Treaty Six Territories. Yeah. And then Elijah Williams, Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe, and lead singer and backup singer for um, Young Young Spirit. Yes. And um, you have a lot of fans in the comments. So shout out, Pyramid awesome. Lake. We're getting shout out quite a bit in the comments. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> we're sending love to you all. Please be safe and we'll pow together again. We will. We're all looking forward to it, aren't we? <laughs> all right. So next up, um, we have a treat. We have a live performance for all of our attendees here today on Zoom, also on Facebook. So we are streaming live on Facebook and um, I would like to bring up to the stage, Shauna Tom and Perry Thompson, the lovebirds over there in Oregon. <laughs> Shauna Tom is a woman's fancy shawl dancer. She is um, Tamuk Shoshone and Danae. Perry Thompson is also Danae. And if you two could tell us a little bit more about um, yourself, where you're from, but also if you could tell us a little bit about your dance styles so that there may be folks on here who've never been to a pow. So before they watch you dance and spin and um, amaze us with your footwork work and stamina, if you could tell us a little bit about um, your dance styles, we'd appreciate that. 
Good evening, everybody. My name is Shauna Tom, and I'm an enrolled <laughs> member of the Tomok Tribe of Western Shoshone from Lee, Nevada. I'm also a member of the Navajo Nation from Church Rock, New Mexico. Hello, my name is Perry Thompson. I'm from Chinle, Arizona. Um, I now reside in Dallas, Oregon. Today, I will be uh, dancing uh, Men's Fancy, which I've, some people have told me this dance has uh, uh, origins from the Wild Bill West show. And I've also heard uh, other tribes have origins of this dance as well. But today I will be dancing my style, which I have uh, been dancing since I was about three years old, maybe. Since I started walking. <laughs> Harry and I are both blessed to come from very large powwow families. We've been dancing since we could walk. But we are now what's called senior fancy dancers, which mm -hmm. means we are in our upper 40s, but we're not going to share what number that is exactly. But what we're coming from, uh, broadcasting from, is very important to us. That is our CrossFit gym here in Dallas, Oregon. It's Harvest CrossFit. In order to do what we do, and, and Perry and I both are all around dancers, meaning we dance four different styles, plus our tribe's traditional uh, styles. But in order to do fancy dance, men and women's, we train six days a week, CrossFit, swimming, and running. We love it. And, it, and the reason why we train so hard is because we love to dance. Uh, dancing is how we came together. Yes. We knew each other uh, when we were a lot younger, but um, I was in Phoenix, Arizona, traveling to powwows, and I saw a handsome, fancy dancer dancing in the spotlight and um, <laughs> went up and introduced myself. And um, years later, here we are training and dancing together. Um, my advice to young people uh, looking to dance, either a Native American or any, any other uh, practice they're looking to get into, whether that's artwork, writing, singing, anything, any expression of yourself. What dancing has given to me and what it means to me is when I grew up, I grew up in the Bay Area of California. And as you could imagine, I went to school with thousands and thousands of other kids, but I was the only one who looked like this, even out of my outfit. I didn't connect or I didn't relate to any other kids. And that was really hard on me because there was no other native students uh, but me. And Powell gave me that, that something to connect to. When I went to a Powell and I saw hundreds and hundreds of other Native American children, it made me remember we're still here. And so that's why powwow has been so hard for me or so important for me to hold on to. Um, all the beadwork and, and the feather work and everything you see, you can't buy it in a store. Perry and I do this together. So besides our training and our dancing, which we, we practice besides training quite regularly, we also bead together, do our feather work together. It's really the glue and the cornerstone of who we are, not only individually, but as a couple, we really hold on to it. So. That for me would be the biggest thing is, is my advice for other dancers or other people getting into a new um, art form to express themselves is find that way to connect to your mental and physical health. We always like to say disease is not tradition. And when we say disease, we all know that Native American people and, and, and people in general, and we, we see that now with the pandemic, it's becoming more and more evident. Diabetes, high blood pressure, all of this is so prominent throughout our society. We've got to stop it. We've got to start empowering ourselves again, mentally, physically, spiritually. So that's the biggest thing is hold on. And it's not finding a way to love yourself because I truly believe that's inside all of us already. It's harnessing it and focusing on that and being able to realize that we all have that ability to love ourselves because we're all beautiful beings in the creator's eyes. My advice to my younger self would be just get out there and dance. I mean, it's pretty much playing really simple. I know a lot of people are shy, a lot of people are afraid, but just get out there and dance. We all have our own, own beat that we dance to. So, and today we'll be dancing a uh, crow hop. Shauna will take a little bit and I'll take, take a little bit and we'll be switching in and out. And then our second, we'll be dancing to two songs. Our second song would be a shake song. And we'll, at a certain point, we'll be both dancing at the same time, which we do here at CrossFit. We work out with one another, and we also dance with one another. We make our outfits with, with one another. So I hope you all enjoy the dance. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, 
shawl, sometimes called the butterfly dance. You can always identify a fancy shawl dancer by the shawl over their arms. Sometimes old style dancers will carry their shawl over one arm, their left arm. Shauna is a contemporary fancy shawl dancer. They got the juice, let's turn them loose. Thunder Hill, bring it on, boys. Here we oh, go. Oh, here we go, baby. Here we go. Go for it. Ruben, if you want to throw in some commentary, go for it. Here we go. Shauna Tom, here we go, Shauna. Woo! Show them how it's done. Watch the footwork. Got the fast pair of moccasins. All right. Oh! <laughs> 
him, Shauna. Get him. Man, that was awesome. Big awesome. Up. I had the gallery view everybody. I wish you guys could have seen all of us in the background. <laughs> I saw you. Like, everybody's over here, head bobbing. Like, <laughs> out. Oh, that felt so good to watch you guys dance. I know. Perry's probably wanted to dance for about two hours now. He's probably been dressed since 6 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look, they're not even tired. These guys, role models. Not only do they live a healthy lifestyle, Sean and Perry are um, yeah. inspirational. They're Sean was holding models. her shawl. Did you see her? She was holding her shawl for a number. Yeah, <laughs> take my number. I know, she was holding her shawl. <laughs> Love it. That's how it's done. See, it does not just it make everybody feel so good. So, Shauna, I know you gave us some inspiring words and our comments blew up. People are really thanking you for that inspiration, the words of encouragement. And that's something I really admire about Shauna is, you know, when she gets out there, when she represents her family, when she speaks for her community, she always speaks with such heart and compassion. And um, I, I, you inspire a lot of people. You've inspired me. <laughs> and we're like the same age, but you're, um, and you're amazing. <laughs> and I just love seeing you out there in the dance ring. And you too, Perry. So, right. so beautiful to watch. That felt fantastic. <laughs> um, any last things you want to share with us? Uh, you know, I guess the, the biggest thing for both of us, both Perry and I, is we, we want to remind everybody, keep moving. It feels like, and we've kind of had to battle that a little bit ourselves, even though we try to stay on the move and the go. But we have to keep that that mantra in our hearts all the time, especially right now. Keep moving. My grandma used to always say, any movement, as long as it's forward, it's good. So we just okay. want to remind everybody, keep moving. As long as we stick together and we remember love and kindness, um, we'll get through it. And, and we'll come out the other the other side and we're going to be out dancing again and hopefully through this webinar we'll see new faces not only in the arena but in the stands wanting to learn more about us because really that's why we do this too is we want to encourage people to to learn about our native people and know we're still here we're strong we're we're the dentists and the doctors and the, the bankers and the financial wizards the models um, well i'm not but there's models out there <laughs> we're, we're all around you so Our casino we're still here. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that inspiration. And I love that, you know, Ruben was talking to us, reminding us to listen and, you know, maybe step up in those roles at, at the powwows, get more involved to learn, learn yep. a little bit more. Maybe we're going to see some more female MCs rising up. You know, this coronavirus is <laughs> really, um, I think, inspired us to step into different ways and see appreciate the things that we took for granted maybe yeah. mm -hmm. and then think about you know the things that we value and how we spend our time and where we spend our time and maybe think a little bit differently about how we're going to move into this new phase of our new normal after the coronavirus mm -hmm. and then you know Delina's talking about family Delina and Elijah and how places like this gatherings like this cultural spiritual events like this help bring us together and help our families grow and bring us stronger. And then reminding us, Shauna and Perry, reminding us to keep moving, to nourish our, you know, not only are we nourishing our hearts and our spirits with this gathering of people and, and, and the celebration of song and dance and that, that like essence or that, 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 that beauty that, that like our, our, we share with our ancestors and the spirits, but then also taking responsibility for our body and for our presence and making sure that we're healthy and that we nourish ourselves and our bodies too. I love that. You guys are rock stars. Thank you. So um, next up is I'm going to pass it back over to Sanavi. So Sanavi, if you could introduce our next vignette for Steve Nighthawk, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So, oh, go for it. <laughs> so unfortunately, Steve couldn't make it this evening, but I'm more than happy to introduce him. Uh, like many people who have expressed themselves in terms of the power relationship that they have, um, he feels a lot of support and a safe space to express himself as an artist and a dancer. And he shares a little piece of that in this video that I've made. And I hope 
But more importantly, I hope that the audience can gather the strong sense of kindness and humility that he carries in his work and just in his conduct day to day. Um, he wasn't able to provide any advice at this time, unlike a lot of the other <laughs> singers and artists here. But um, he's hoping that when you guys watch this piece, you guys will be inspired in some way. So I'll share it and go from there. Oops. My great great grandma lived in this area right here. There was an older house here. Before this was a reservation, her and other families moved here from the river about about 100 years ago. Mom. My name's Nighthawk. I grew up here in the uh, Reno Spartan area and I'm of the Paiute, Shoshone, and Washington. Stop it, restart it. Okay. There we go. It, it didn't share the screen. Oh, sorry. No, Do I know that or is it there? Um, no, we just see you. Oh, okay. Sorry, thank you. No problem. <laughs> Let's see. Let me show And I you. did see, so while you're getting that set up, I did see we had a couple comments and uh, some questions for Shauna and Perry. So we'll get to those um, questions. You want to up now or? There you are. We well, can see it. Oh, that one's Selena's video. Are you sure? Oh, no, this should be. Is that the right one? Okay. I only have Steve's up, yeah. Okay, sorry. No. My great great grandma lived in this area right here. There was an older house here. Before this was a reservation, her and other families moved here from the river about 100 years ago. My name is Steve Nighthawk. I grew up here in the Reno Spartan area, and I'm of the Paiute, Shoshone, and Washoe Nations. Being a native artist is very important to me. I started doing artwork when I was maybe 10, 12 years old. My love for nature inspired my artwork. And just sitting here, I'm I don't know if you noticed, but I'm looking at the clouds. I always try to put those together. And if I could look at the real thing like I am right now, if I can, I'm always thinking, okay, how can I do that cloud with the uh, chalk pastels? The eagle, he's a messenger. He takes our prayers. The bald eagle, the golden eagle. And personally, I like the wings, the feathers. I'm still fascinated about the detail. Last 20 years, I've been involved in the powwow scene and having, combining the two, being an, a native art vendor, as well as a dancer, we combined two of them. And that's even more interesting, just to the aspect that the people that come to the vendors are a lot of times trading, talking, different areas, different people. This piece here is from a tribal member out of Primitive Peak. When I go to a powwow, I like uh, being involved with the other people, native and non-native, whether it's at the powwow to dance or to show artwork. The native people have been doing this for thousands of years, dancing, singing, and integrating the artwork. If it's not on some paper, hide, or on rock, like pictoglyphs, it's part of our ancestor story. And to move forward, I try and teach the younger people, family members or not, that it's very important. Awesome. And that is our artist spotlight, Mr. Steve Nighthawk. And any, I know there's a lot of people on here who are from the Reno area or, or, or from Nevada. And if you travel to powwows in this area, you're going to see Steve set up 
selling his paintings and his, and his drawings. And it, it makes me happy every time I see him. He's always such a kind gentleman. So we're really grateful to be able to, that he was willing to participate in this event um, today. And uh, we'll see his recordings probably on the Indian Commission's PAW website. So we'll keep the recordings and uh, continue to share and enjoy them for um, years to come. Before I transitioned on, I did want to go to gallery view so that I can, um, you know, folks in our in our um, our panelists can chime in. But even like Ruben, like I just wanted to highlight the different components of a powwow. So we've talked about the powwow from a, a MC perspective and and how they move things along and they help determine the energy and the feel of the powwow. We've talked. We've heard from two champion um, singers, Grammy Award with award nominated um, singers, and um, and a powwow isn't a powwow without singing. Without singing, there's a lot of our ceremonies, our powwows, a lot of our cultural gatherings don't have the energy or, uh, you know, the singing is at the heart, at the foundation of a lot of that um, prayer and uh, dancing, those, those gatherings. And then we've, we've seen some dancers here too, but sometimes we overlook the vendors and our artists who are in our, our food vendors who are part of that powwow community. I, I was a, a powwow vendor for like a decade and, um, it's, it's like its own subculture, the vendors, and they all get to, everybody gets to know each other, you know, support each other. Hey, watch my booth while I rent to the restroom or I get some food or whatever. And like people take care of each other, just like with drummers. We travel around, you travel with other groups, you know, we stay at people's homes. It's like, even within the culture, the larger culture, power culture, there's even like subcultures within the group. And so that's one thing I wanted to make sure that we highlighted when talking about vendors is that they're also an integral part of our powwow circle. They're the people that we rely on when we, you know, ran out of, you know, maybe duct tape. Some powwow vendors have duct tapes and sunglasses and like essentials, but then also the food, where we get our food when we're at powwows and, and all the, some of the best jewelry. You know, a lot of times our best jewelry comes from powwow vendors. But I also wanted to invite Ruben, if um, there's anything else that you wanted to contribute to, to um, highlight the importance of vendors and the role that vendors play in powwows. I, I think that's a very good point, Teresa. Um, you know, vendors, a lot of times, it's where people get their supplies. They, you don't have the opportunity to travel all the way out to shipwreck, you know, all the way out to, to um, Oregon, you know, or Washington, it's in, it's actually in Washington over there. And, or, you know, uh, so, when they hear that certain vendors are set up there that have certain supplies, beads, needles, um, moccasin soles, um, smoke tide, you know, um, just certain vendors have certain things. And a lot of times people, you know, for, for the longest time, that's the reason we would go to Denver. We would go to Denver just for the vendors. Um, and then, uh, but, um, Food vendors, you know, I always make a joke too. Sometimes, you know, some of the best Chinese food I've ever had was at powwows. But, but a lot of times, you know, the thing about powwow and, and what we got to remind our, our people is that everything about powwow is native. It should be native. It's supposed to be native. But when when the dollar comes in as far as, you know, upping the amount of vendors and making more space because they're paying a, a premium vendor fee, it's adding more money to the, to the piggy bank to have a bigger payout because the drum contest is up to 15,000 now because we added 50 more vendors. So the dynamics of that, you know, when you get into the money value scale of things, but traditionally, I agree with Teresa, or I don't even know if I'm agreeing with you or what you're saying, but your your vendors should be native, your 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 customers should be native, your your MC should be native, your dancers should be native, your singers should be native, your judges should be native. You know, so everything is there is native. And that's one of the things in this world that the non-Indians can't take from us. It, you know, as much as they're trying. And as much as you see videos in Germany and if there are powwows that are going on over there, or you see some crazy funky videos on YouTube, man, but the the true essence of powwow is 100% native and it always should be. 
<laughs> I see Shauna clapping over there. And I, when you were talking about the power of food, I saw Delina nodding her head. And um, <clears throat> it's true, though. I, I there's a there, there's a place in with Kumakong, Ontario. Then this this guy, I don't know what tribe or what tribe, <laughs> what nation he is. He's um. Man, I don't know. He's he's some kind of Asian, but he makes this plate called um, uh, hot noodles. It's called spicy noodles. It's called, and my gosh, it's good. I've never had anything like it in the world, and it, it's at Wikimakong, Ontario, Powell. Um, you know, but like, but like if you want, if you want neck bones, you go to the Blue Bus, right? You go to the Blue Bus in, in Onion Lake, and they're they're hundred percent native inside there. They're Cree. They're Cree. They're 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 not talking anything else. They're talking Cree. You know, if you want, if you want the the big Indian burger from Benny's in Pine Ridge, South Dakota, you know, there there's certain vendors. The Hoka, the Hoka potato, Michael Roberts. You know, there's pe people know their vendors, but you you're you're starting to see a lot more non-natives at powwows. Yeah, and just sort of to reference that, there is a um, like Native American arts law i can't forget I, I don't recall the name but it it, it stipulates that natives are so if you're native um well if you're not native you can't represent that you're selling native goods there's some type of law that that protects native oh, yeah. Art. yeah and so there's a lot there are a lot of powwow committees that will require vendors to submit their proof of tribal affiliation with the application. Not all powwows require that. I've, I've been on a lot of powwow committees, but that is something that is pretty common. And so Ruben referenced that there. As a powwow committee member, um, we do advertise powwows to everybody. So they are open to the public and for communities, um, the larger community outside of that reservation community. A lot of powwow committees, um, rely on their powwow as their annual celebration as a way for people outside the reservation, outside of our indigenous community to learn more about us in a welcoming, safe environment and a way for us to show the beauty of our culture to our neighbors. And so most powwows will say um, open to the public. And so if you're watching this webinar, if you're not affiliated with a tribe and you're wondering um, if, if you can attend a powwow, most powwows are open to the public and it says right there on the um, flyer. And um, I will tell you as a veteran powwow committee member, we love it when non-natives come to the powwow because they're usually the folks that spend Monday at the vendor's booth. <laughs> and right. so our vendors love it <laughs> when there are non-natives at the powwow also. Yep. yep. And so you'll see like billboards. Some communities have billboards and ads in the newspaper and they're advertising on Facebook. And so uh, I do want to encourage people to check out come 2021 check out powwows.com, check out Facebook, and you can look for the closest powwow in your area. There are powwows all every weekend across the United States, but like powwow season is, you know, spring, summer, that summer season. That's the hardcore powwow season. Thank you guys for that. And then we've got one more guest speaker that I would like to bring up, and then we'll have a quick question and answer because we're getting close to time. There were several questions, especially for Sean and Perry. Um, you really hyped it up, guys. People got excited. <laughs> we're posting in the comments. That was, <laughs> I know. Awesome. That was awesome to watch. I know. Yeah. Like, you know, fireworks. I don't think I've ever seen Perry dance like that before. <laughs> so um, I want to invite up. Our... Oh, sit up Go ahead. <laughs> See, everybody, everybody's been missing Powell. We've been feeling real good. Uh, but next, I want to invite up Bucky Harjo. And Bucky is um, Paiute Shoshone. <laughs> also an enrolled member with the Reno Sparks Indian Colony right here in northern Nevada and Bucky is a staple at powwows in northern Nevada. You'll see him at every powwow taking photos. He's got his cameras. He's got his setup. He'll be recording at Grand Entry. He's got his cameras. There we go. Um, um, throughout the weekend sometimes he has a drone where he'll take aerial footage of Grand Entry. It's spectacular and then come Monday Come Monday, every Powell family around here, they're always monitoring Bucky's Facebook page, waiting to see if he took any photos of them or their relatives or their children, and then we all tag ourselves. <laughs> so um, Bucky has become a staple of Powell culture here in Northern Nevada. So we've, we've invited Bucky to join us today to share um, a couple of tips, a couple of things that he's learned, share some advice with folks who are on, a, on this webinar today because we know that um, there's etiquette to photography and videography at powwows. And so that's a question we often get from um, non-natives 
you know, is it okay to take pictures? What is some, what are some of the protocol? What are some things that we should be aware of? And so um, I'm gonna share the stage with, I'm gonna pass the stage actually to Bucky and um, ask him to share a little bit more about that. All right, thank you for that. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, hear you on, on, all right. Again, I'm Bucky Harjo, Paiute Shoshone from right here from um, Reno, Nevada. Okay, and I'm going to take you all through a quick lesson, Powwow Photography 101. First thing is get permission or get a valid press pass. Um, if you don't know how to do that, uh, you can check with uh, the Powwow Committee or, you know, go onto their Facebook page and, and find the number and, and call the hosting, you know, members of the Powwow and get their permission. Um, also, you want to do, you want to ask about, you know, the do's and don'ts, because at each different, each powwow, you know, could be different. They're all not the same. Um, there could be different, you know, protocols for, for photographers. Um, uh, what I've seen is um, people bring a load of equipment and, you know, it, it might get in the way or it could get stolen. And you're responsible for your, your own equipment that you do bring. Um, so, like me, I get to know the ground. I walk around, I see what background is, so, you know, I scout it out to see, you know, what, where the sun's going to be, where it's going to set, um, where the lighting is going to be at, you know, certain times of the day. So, you know, you know, walk around, get to know everybody, greet, greet everybody, uh, introduce yourself. Um, you know, when it comes around the drum, everybody, you know, they, they always like to see the drum and they like the crowd around the drum, especially during um, competition time, you know. So one of those things is don't crowd around the drum or the announcer stand. I know everybody likes to get Ruben's picture and everything is like that and rush rush the stand, you know, to get close to him. So that'd be one thing not to do. Um, don't block the pathways for the dancers come into the arena. Um, especially during grand entry, don't rush over to where the dancers are, you know, don't block the path, you know, when they come into the arena. Um, don't go within the boundaries or inside of the arena, you know, to get those extreme close-ups and things like that. There'll be, there be opportunities for that, but not during the grand entries or during the competitions. Um, only those that are designated, you know, photographers, you know, who are allowed in, you know, should be, be the ones to do that. Don't stand in front of others, be respectful, kneel or crouch, or, you know, sit on the ground. I mean, it, it may hurt, your butt might become numb after a while and everything like that. But like I said, move around. Um, and then there are times when we don't do photography or video, you know, it's during, you know, during the time of prayer, you know, the opening prayer or prayers, special prayers that might be you know, said, you know, within the power itself, you know, don't videotape that or photograph the person that are praying. Um, sometimes people are always asking me for business card. Business card is probably something that I should, you know, produce myself, you know, to pass out. So those people who, who aren't on Facebook and who want to contact me to get copies of, you know, their photographs and things like that. Uh, number one, don't sell your photographs. If you're coming in, you know, as a business person, you know, don't, don't don't sell you know that, that's a big no-no i always like to just give them out you know to, to the dancers um and people get excited and everything they like to rush up you know touch a dancer or touch their feathers touch their body stroke their hair and you know that's that's a big no-no um there'll be times you know when you're asked not to to photograph you know during um during the whistle songs, you know, when when a dancer, you know, is touched by the spirit and, you know, from a drum or the voices of the singers and things like that, um, then he'll bring out his eagle bone whistle and then um, we're always asked, you know, not to photograph during that time. Sometimes it's not announced, you know, I know because of, you know, the years that I've been photo being a photographer as a fellow you know, to, to shut my camera off or to shut my video cameras off, you know, if I see people doing that, then I'll kindly walk up to them and ask them, you know, not to, not to be photographing. And if they would, you know, kindly delete the images that they have taken during that moment, you know, I'll ask them to do so. 
um, there'll be times, you know, not all also also during, you know, picking up at the feather too. Those are that's a ceremony, and that should be photographed. Um, pretty much, you know, be aware of others around you. You know, you know, be aware of where you're standing, who you might be standing in front of. Um, don't encroach into a family's territory. You know, like where they have their canopies or shade coverings. You know, for where a family is sitting. So be respectful. And, you know, move around um, and, and find your spot. Usually. You know, like I do, I go in front of um, like a pole, you know, where the poles that hold up the arbor, I'll stand on one of those poles or I kneel, you know, so I'm not in anybody's, anybody's way. And my tip to get awesome photographs is listen to the drum, watch your dancer or the dancers, watch how they're moving. And during those, those, on our beats during those push-ups, you know, there'd be like maybe five, six, seven, some drums would do 10. And then you can see the dancers, you know, they'll show off their, their special moves, you know. And at that time you can, you know, capture some remarkable, you know, moments right there. And that's how some of my photographs are pretty awesome, I think. And just something else I just wanted to say too, you know, as, as a kid, you know, growing up, I'm gonna give my age away. I've been going to powwow since I was in 1960, the 70s, 80s, 90s, the 2000s, you know, and it's growing up, it's just, you know, not having the equipment that we have today, you know, being digital, you know, it's, it's, it's expensive, but it's affordable. And, you know, you can do your own processing and everything like that but you know how well it's just it's so moving and you see people with so many vibrant colors you know it's just flowing and moving in all, all directions and things like that you, you've seen some of my photographs where I touched it up and gone gone beyond I mean I see other things other than just a dancer dancing in the ground and everything like that I just see just a whole bunch of colors just bursting and, you know you'll see some of my photographs where I've retouched and put it like that so again you know thank you and be respectful of powwows that's all i say you know we can't wait till 2020 thank you all okay i got a, a tick tock of yours to show for everybody right now okay can you guys see it these are some of bucky's photos He is um, well known in these parts for his videos. Well, Teresa, sorry, can I just add to Bucky's comments yeah. on all the points that he made? I, I'd just like to reinforce every point that he made in terms of videography and capturing those moments on camera, whether that be like still photography or, you know, um, videography, because it's really important to respect the area that you're in. And I think a lot of um, Native people understand that, and I think a lot of non-Natives do, but I just want to reiterate that for people to make sure that, you know, when you come to any type of ceremony, whether that be, you know, celebration or ceremony, that you get the okay, or you're, like, consciously aware of, like, whether or not you can be there, or whether or not it's okay to film those spaces, and so I just want to thank Bucky for highlighting that, because I think that's really important, and something that a lot of outsiders don't understand, but as, like, an insider from the Native community, I think that's really important to um, 
be aware of. And that's something that you can rely on an MC to help give guidance for. So um, MCs will tell you, um, you know, this is an honor song, you know, no photos, please stand, things like that. So if you are, if you're not sure when's appropriate time to take photos, you can take cues by looking around. Are there other photographers? And does it look like, are the native photographers taking photos? Did the MC specifically say you can't? And if they didn't say you specifically can't at that, that time, then it's probably um, a, a safe time to take photos. Ruben, do you have anything to add to that as far as like photos when, because usually the MC will let, let folks know when not to take photos, correct? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> um... That is another big responsibility of an MC. And as you mentioned a while ago, Teresa, um, the MC, he carries a lot of duties and he's got to be on top of, on, on top of, uh, you know, phot photographs, videography as well. He's got to, he's got to, you know, be on top of uh, what takes place on the arena. He's got to be paying attention, communication with his arena director, um, you know, and then just, just everything to keep things flowing. And, um, you know, a lot of times that power is, uh, well, I don't know about a lot of times, but, you know, a couple of times I made a, I made a joke about, you know, some of the non-native women that come here taking pictures, you know, it's okay to look at our Indian men, but don't stare too long because some of our Indian women are jealous Indian women. So, and, uh, and I uh, think you can't be staring at Bucky too long because Bucky's got, <laughs> Bucky's got a jealous woman at home. <laughs> can't be staring at Perry too long because Sean is gonna Sean is gonna take the camera from you. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell him, man, he takes a lot of bead work. Heck with cooking. I know it, right? <laughs> awesome. All right. So that brings us towards the end of our webinar. We're not quite done yet, but we have a couple minutes for question and answers. So just about you know five minutes. I do want to point out there's been we've got a vibrant conversation going on in the in the chat box and thank you for that. So Kostin, thank you for um, posting the name of that act. It's called the Indian Arts and Crafts Act of 1990. So that is the the act that says that folks who sell <clears throat> native artworks that say, say they're selling native artwork should be native. Thank you very that. much. Yes, and then we had some questions. Shauna and Perry, this uh, this question's for you. I'm gonna paraphrase because I don't know exactly where it is, but there was a an attendee who was wondering if your dance was choreographed, like the hula, like how a hula is choreographed performance. Um, can you speak <laughs> to that? Um, uh, that? That's a quick answer. We don't have that good of a memory. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, actually, no, uh, we do have, uh, and almost all dancers have signature moves and they can be passed down from family. Um, and like we always say, um, I, I learned how to dance from my older sisters. They're, they're my idols. And my older sister, Leah McGurk Brown, she's my uh, shawling idol. And so you'll see when I dance, you'll see a lot of influence. And I know Perry, same way with his dad, yes. Pete Thompson. Um, so we don't choreograph our moves, but when we dance, you should, people, when, when they watch us, they should see not only a representation of our family, but our own personality. So none of it's planned when we go out there. We just dance from our hearts. Yes. There are yes, times in powwows when there are choreographed dances. And so those would be like team dances. And sometimes those are like specials. You don't see that at every powwow, but they'll say, you know, mother daughter team dance, or <laughs> maybe it's just a regular team dance. And so those are fun. People have matching mm -hmm. outfits and everybody's in sync. But most of our, yeah, our, the contests, the, the inner tribals, those are not choreographed performances. And I think I cut you off. Perry, did, were you going to add something to that? Um, actually, no, she said everything for me. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Yes, yes, it does. I was ready for that, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> And if there are any other questions that I may have missed in the comments, please retype them. There are several um, words of gratitude and appreciation. Um, so um, to the panelists, if you'd like to read through the comments, there are some very um, gracious comments there. Um, so if there are not any other questions, I think we're gonna go ahead. Our goal is to wrap it up at 7.30, it's 7.29. So we're right on time. Um, before we close out, well, I guess to close us out, We've asked Delina and Elijah to 
wrap us up with a traveling song, but first I'm going to pass it over to Stacy. We just wanted to acknowledge our uh, sponsors one last time before we close out this event. Let's get your audio working. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, everyone, on behalf of the Nevada Indian Commission, thank you. Um, our ancestors are proud right now. I want to thank each and every one of our sponsors, um, but moreover, thank you for all of the artists here tonight. Thank you for sharing your beautiful stories, your songs, your dances, your videos, the photography, the drawings. You all are each amazingly talented and it's so telling of your character that you're willing to share this with the World Wide Web. So I wanna remind everyone who's watching that this entire program is being recorded and it will be posted on the Stewart Indian School YouTube page, uh, excuse me, YouTube channel. So if you wanna rewind and listen a little harder to some of Shauna Tom's inspiring words or get a little more information about Bucky's um, photo tips, you can certainly listen again and please share it with your friends. Let everybody know about um, This Is Why We Dance. Um, I need to send a special, special thank you out to Senevi and Teresa and the Nevada Indian Commission Program Officer, Sari Nichols. Um, those ladies were really the creative geniuses behind this. So um, I feel like we've had a great night. I can't wait to finish it off with the song and, you know, COVID schmovid, right? We got it. We got it. Thank you, Stacy. I also wanted to plug a couple of upcoming events. So, so um, sorry, would have been remiss to let us if we had not um, plugged our powwow for next year. So Stuart Day powwow for 2021 is scheduled for June 18th through 20th. It is always Father's Day weekend. And that powwow is held in um, Carson City. And um, if anybody would like to learn more about um, the Nevada Indian Commission, there is a museum folks can visit, correct? Is it, is it still open? It absolutely is open. Very safe social distancing. We're open 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, right here at the beautiful Stewart campus. Thank you, Stacy. And I also want to plug um, the Rio Sparks Indian Colony Powell Club. We have moved our Powell Club dance classes to a virtual platform on Zoom. And so we've invited several of our guests to return to be able to join us as guest speakers and presenters or instructors at upcoming Powell Club dance classes. So we wanna invite attendees who are watching today or re-watching at a different time to, enjoy, to join us to spend more time with Elijah and Alina and Perry and Shauna and Ruben to learn a little bit more about you know, singing and dancing and then you know, the ins and outs of powwows. So we'll be creating a flyer identifying those dates and I'll share those dates with um, Miss Stacy Montooth and um, we'll announce on the Indian Commission's website. But those sessions will all be in the coming weeks before October 1st, so the month of September on Thursdays at 6 p.m. virtually on Zoom. With that being said, I want to um, ask um, Delina and Elijah to unmute their, their phones. And I also wanted to ask um, Ruben to kind of wrap us up, just kind of like closing out a powwow. You know how that feels. MC gets on, everybody's getting paid out. We have that last honor <laughs> song. So, you know, this is our, our wrap up. And I just wanted to quick acknowledge that in our tech check yesterday, one of the things we also talked about were you know, our new normal and how we're creating this new thing. And then we're all going through a little bit of a hard time right now. There's, um, I don't know if, I think we may have gotten to a point where all of us have been affected by the coronavirus, the pandemic. And, you know, we all know somebody who has gone ill or even passed due to the virus. And so I also wanted to acknowledge that at this time that, um, that I know this is a hard time. This is a hard time for all of us. And um, there's been several people in our communities recently, some really big names in Indian country who have recently walked on and are making that path, that, that, that trip right now through the star path. And, and um, they're in our hearts 
and uh, will always be with us. And um, we know it's a hard time. We're going through a hard time too. So I just wanted to acknowledge that you're not in this alone. We're feeling it too. And so we hope that this time that we share together, talking about power and hearing the voice of our, our favorite MC and watching the vibrancy and the energy of our dancers and hearing the beauty of our singers, we hope that gave you some comfort. We hope that made you feel good because we know it's a little bit of a hard time right now. So um, with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Ruben and Delina and Elijah. Right on, thank you. Um, I'm so glad you mentioned that, Teresa, because I was gonna, I was gonna kind of wrap that up too along those lines. <laughs> then, um, but too at the same time, you know, um, <clears throat> it's it's been said, said before that our uh, our powwow is a celebration of life, and this uh, this life, um, de death is part of life, and 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 when we make that full circle. We enter this. We enter this world, and then we infant, adolescent, adult, and then we get our elderly, and then we we come right back to that same area where we came in, and um, so the circle of life, and and then uh, you know the circle that we dance in, and as native native people, we have a lot of circles. We have the sweat circle, the sun dance circle, the lodge, the big lodge. We have our our drum, our drum is circle. And everything that 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 circular, there, there's meaning to it. So, um, with that being said, I, I'm just happy to be part of this. Uh, may the Creator bless each and every one of you. Those that have listened in tonight, all the words that were spoken, the uh, the, the the dances that were danced, the expressions made, the the knowledge that was shared, and and to uh, and to all the sponsors. Just like, just like it's been said before, I'm just trying to wrap everything back up. And one final thing to say thank you. In Cheyenne, you say, Nia Ish. But if it's all of us, it's Nia Ish Shemin. Nia Ish Shemin. And, and uh, the Cheyenne word to listen is Atamun. Atamun. And thank you from all of us. Nia Ish Shemin. So with that, we'll come on over here to the talented, uh, the beautiful, the, the amazing mesmerizing voices of Elijah and Delina as they harmonize and tickle your earbuds just a little bit. And we're going to uh, pose this out in a good way. Yay. <clears throat> Why we dance honoring Native American power culture. Thank you for everybody who tuned in via Zoom or Facebook Live. Thank you to all of our panelists. 
Thank you, Elijah, Delina, Sanabi, Ruben, uh, Perry, Shauna, Bucky, Stacy, and everybody who made this possible. Thank you to our funders. So with that, we hope you guys have a great west rest of your Wednesday evening. Bye, my pee. Bye, hope. Konnichiwa.